Hello, miners! Not little people, but cryptocurrency miners. Welcome to another tutorial about cryptocurrency and mining and how the hell am I going to get into it and all of that. First off, I did another video, pretty popular, uh, got me lots and lots of views, um, but it was older uh, and things have changed in the world of cryptocurrency since I made that video about a month and a half ago. If you missed that tutorial, don't worry about it. We're going to be starting from scratch today to go into that. Um, actually, I am mining right now, and I'm, as you can see, I'm mining. So to verify that I am mining, I am. Uh, I'm going to actually turn this off. It looks like it's slowing down my stream. So it does eat up a bit of horsepower on your PC. So I don't want to do that. Uh, so we'll get back to mining later. As you see, I was mining, so just to verify, I do mine. Um, okay, so what are we doing today? Well, uh, this is going to be a tutorial video from scratch. So if you're uh, unfamiliar with Litecoin mining, Bitcoin mining, any of those cryptocurrency type things, you're, you're considering getting into it, and you're not quite sure how to do it or what it's all involved with, this is the place to be today because that's what we're going to cover. We're going to go over all this stuff. It's going to be a long video, probably at least an hour. So uh, get some snacks and uh, you can pause it at any point in time if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're watching it live with me, of course, right now, you can pause it, but not much is going to happen. Okay, so uh, if you've already watched my other tutorial video, you can still watch this one. I'm There's going to be a lot of updates, things that I said in the other video that just basically are wrong now. So. We're going to cover a lot of that stuff today and talk about what really does work, what doesn't work, and also some of the new coins. Hey, Guild Slacker TV, thanks for coming. Uh, let's see. Sorry, I'm just going to fix my camera a little bit here. There we go. I'm not so crooked. All right. So let's get on with the show as we're going to go. First off, what is cryptocurrency? Okay, I'm actually going to read to you the definition from the Wikipedia. Not the whole thing, just a little bit of it. Because when I said it the last time, I made some mistakes and I got people all in their panties in a bunch. So no more bunching panties. We're going to actually read it from the real deal. Okay? So uh, cryptocurrency is a digital medium exchange. The first cryptocurrency began trading was Bitcoin in 2009. Since then, numer numerous cryptocurrencies have become available. Fundamentally, cryptocurrencies are specifications regarding the use of currency, which seek to incorporate principles of cryptography to implement a distributed, decentralized, and secure information economy. Now, even though I'm reading this directly from Wikipedia, we will break it down in just a second. Um, when comparing cryptocurrencies to fiat money, fiat money is uh, money from countries like America or England or whatever, um, the most notable difference is how no group of individual group or individual may accelerate, stunt, or otherwise significantly abuse the production of money. Instead, only a certain amount of cryptocurrency is produced by the entire cryptocurrency system collectively at a rate which is bounded by the value both prior defined and publicly known. Dozens of cryptocurrency specifications have been defined, the most similar to and derived from the first implemented cryptocurrency protocol which is Bitcoin. Within the cryptocurrency system, the safety, integrity, and balance of all ledgers is ensured by a swarm of mutually distrustful parties known as miners, who are, for the most part, general members of the public, actively protecting the network by maintaining high hash rate difficulty for their chance at receiving a randomly distributed small fee. Averting the underlying security of cryptocurrency is mathematically possible but the cost may be unfeasibly high. For example, against Bitcoin's proof-of-work based system, an attacker would need computational power greater than that controlled by the entire swarm of miners in order to have a 1 to the 2 power number authentication rounds for this cryptocurrency minus 1 of a chance. Sounds scary, right? I know, but it's okay. Which means Directly circumventing crypto uh, Bitcoin security may be a task well beyond even the technology company the size of Google. Take that in. <laughs> As of January 2014, no nation has replaced fiat money with cryptocurrency. 
That we'll get into just a little bit too. Um, most cryptocurrencies are designed to gradually introduce new units of currency, placing the ultimate cap on the total amount of currency that will ever be in circulation. This is done to both mimic the scarcity and value of precious metals and to avoid hyperinflation. As a result, such cryptocurrencies tend to experience hyperdeflation as they grow in popularity and the amount of currency in circulation approaches the finite cap. Compared with ordinary currencies held by financial institutions or kept as cash on hand, cryptocurrencies are less susceptible to seizure by law enforcement. Existing cryptocurrencies are all pseudonyms, although additions such as zero coin and a distributed laundry feature have been suggested, which would allow for anonym anonymity. All right, so basically right now, the main cryptocurrencies that are out there are Bitcoin, Ripple, which I've never even heard of, Litecoin, which we did a whole video on before, Peercoin, Namecoin, Dogecoin, which we're going to talk about today, and Primecoin. There's also another one called Worldcoin, and some other smaller ones that are starting off. And ultimately, we will get to what that all means very shortly. Hey, Kronos, good morning. Okay, so you are now interested in getting into bit or Litecoin mining, and you might be interested in getting a Bitcoin mining. Let's have a look at what the current exchange rate is for a Bitcoin. If you had a single Bitcoin, one, and you wanted to trade that Bitcoin into a US dollar, you would get $830, $829.99 for that one coin. Now these coins started off the same way that Bit, that Litecoin, Dogecoin, Worldcoin all started out, okay? They were really easy to get in the beginning, and some people have tens of thousands of these coins sort of squirreled away. Yes, we're talking about millions of dollars worth of these coins, okay? So you're interested now. You're like, hey, I'm going to get in on that. That sounds exciting. Fair enough. The thing you have to learn right off the bat, though, is there are, because Bitcoin is so much older than all the other coins that are currently out there when they developed it it was using something called um, hold on one second I forget already uh, it uses something called SHA SHA 256 D which is a type of algorithm that the coins are sort of hidden in alright the current ones like uh, Litecoin Dogecoin those are using script S script which is a type of crypt crypto the way they the way they're hiding the coins. Okay. Hey, Nikki. So because of that, there is a type of miner out there called an ASIC miner. First off, when they when Bitcoin first started off, and some of you this is a review, and I understand, but some people that might be new, that's the whole purpose of this video is actually for the new people. So when Bitcoin first started off, you could mine it with your CPU your computer could mine it. It would take a while, but you might find a coin or two a day, you know, uh, and it was no big deal. And then uh, the difficulty started ramping up. And when the difficulty starts ramping up, your processor on your computer doesn't have enough horsepower or the throughput to the RAM to be able to hash that thing out quickly. It takes a while. Okay, so it's, gonna, it's trying to crank through it. It just can't do it. So basically what ended up happening was they shifted Bitcoin mining from the CPU to the GPU. Now your GPU, your video card, a discrete GPU, uh, like an NVIDIA card or an AMD card, that's a card, not something built in your computer. We'll talk about that kind of stuff in just a second. That can crank through pretty quickly, could crank through those Bitcoins. And people were finding Bitcoins fairly regularly that method. Then somebody had a bright idea, wait a second, instead of using the GPUs, which are pretty heavy duty pieces of equipment, plus they're heavy on the energy use, they use a lot of wattage. Let's figure out a way to take that uh, algorithm and put it into a smaller package, and they call that package an ASIC package. Now, the ASIC can actually outperform the GPU at its lowest level, plus it uses almost no power at all. So, there were the first companies that started coming out with these ASIC miners could actually outperform GPUs that people had been building these banks of GPUs to try to get through. So, basically, GPU mining went in the toilet. You couldn't really do it anymore for... Bitcoin, because now these banks of ASICs, you can get an ASIC miner that is the size of this uh, thermometer for like 20 bucks, and it outperforms a uh, like an AMD graphics card 
a brand new AMD graphics card can't keep up with this little miner that needs like 20 bucks you can get them on Amazon okay so you say wait a second that means I should just get those and I can get their USB they plug in a USB port I can get a bunch of those plug them in my USB ports and crank through the mining yes but if you had say 20 of those things and you had them plugged in and you mined for six months you might get a coin because the difficulty has gotten so bad on Bitcoin that you don't see my video. Sorry about that, everybody. Nikki says she doesn't see my video. I see it that it's live on for myself. All right. So anyway, uh, a little distracting. Okay. Trend Dane says he sees it. <laughs> I see it too, so I don't know, maybe uh, Nikki, you have to reset. Anyway, so uh, you could mine with the ASICs and it might take you hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars to get maybe a coin every six months. So is it worth it? Probably not. The difficulty is ramped up so much that at this point, why bother? Let's go have a look at the Bitcoin difficulty. It's okay, Nikki. All right, so the current Bitcoin difficulty is, look at this, folks. Now, to give you a point of reference here, Litecoin is around 4,000, which is down here. I mean, it's actually down here. It can't even see it. It's actually, it's not even on the scale. It's so small. It's way down here. This is one, two, three, four. One billion is the difficulty. It's almost two billion. What I'm trying to say, what this actually means, it's actually going to go over to me, is that it's so difficult to mine right now that you would need tens of thousand dollars worth of equipment to even get a chance of finding a single Bitcoin. So what I'm basically telling you is forget Bitcoin. Just just forget it. it it's not worth it at this point. You've missed the boat. I've missed the boat. Everybody who's getting into this now missed the boat. Just let it go. So that's okay. Because ultimately what we're going to be doing is switching up to other coins. All right. That's the whole purpose of this video today. We're talking about other coins. Now, my last video was how are or what, what could we do to start mining Litecoin? And Litecoin is a great alternative because it is like the silver to gold of the Bitcoin. If you think of Bitcoin as being the gold standard, Litecoin is the silver standard. All the other coins that are coming up are actually sort of... Um, they're sort of like junk coins, okay? But that doesn't really matter because we are gonna have, I'm gonna talk about this in a little bit, how we're going to exchange these coins into Bitcoins. You can actually take, take these junk coins and turn them into Bitcoins if you wanted. And if you're doing that, then basically you're buying gold. You're buying the gold standard of these cryptocurrencies. All right, so let's see. Um, so what do, what, do, what do we get out of mining? Okay, we're going to get coins, and these are virtual currencies. They're not real, as far as in the sense that I can't take my Bitcoin wallet down to 7-Eleven and buy a soda with it, okay? Yet, it's coming. In Canada, you are actually allowed to take Bitcoins out as real currency at the ATM machines. And a few other places are starting to accept a lot of these coins as currency in other places. That's amazing because basically what they're doing is legitimizing these coins. Whether that's going to happen right away for everywhere, I don't know. The you, the governments in all around the world are starting to get really paranoid about this. China shut it down for a while. They basically said no more coin trading. Uh, they didn't say forever. They just took it down for a short time. Uh, a lot of other places are just basically panicking because uh, if I've got a dollar and I'm living in the United States and I've got a buck and I want to go down to the store and buy something, when I buy that thing at the store, say I buy this flashlight, and I paid a dollar for it, the money that is that I just gave the person is basically saying the U.S. government backs the purchase of that flashlight with itself, okay? The government is basically saying that it is going to back that money change, that transfer. It's guaranteeing it. With cryptocurrencies, there is no guarantee. Where, anywhere. <laughs> okay? 
because of that, the governments are starting to panic. They're like, wait a second, um, people are going to be owning all this value that we can't control. Um, there is, as you saw, the entire computational power of Google couldn't break Bitcoin right now. That's amazing. And the federal government might have a lot of power, too, to, to do this sort of thing, but maybe they can't do that right away, or maybe it's hard for them to do. Maybe they could steal it. Who knows? But they would have to steal everybody's coins all at once. Um that is going to be a problem. Oh, Corkless Prime just says, I think eBay added a cryptocurrency section recently too. Amazing. So, what does this mean? It means it's sort of like a paradigm shift in the world. Because what you're basically doing is buying like gold. And you're taking it, putting it into a stash in your house that the government can't get a hold of. Now, if the government were to come and break into your house, they could take your gold. But with cryptocurrency, it's almost impossible for them to take it. You could send it off to another wallet somewhere and then they would have to chase it around. You could do that all day long and you wouldn't lose anything. So the point I'm trying to make is that this is a secure type of funding that you can have outside of your own government's thing that you can use for buying things. Pretty cool. It does have a bit of a shady past. Bitcoin has in the past been able to, you've been able to buy things with it that are sort of nefarious. Uh, there's a couple of sites that you could buy drugs. You could buy, there's one called Silk Road that's been shut down. And that has sort of tainted the image of all these altcoins. And a lot of people, knee-jerk reaction is, oh, that's for buying illegal stuff. I don't want to have anything to do with it. But now if you, now we're just talking, Corkulus just said, this is going to be available on for use on eBay. Now you could buy a car with a Bitcoin or two or three, whatever. You have five or six Bitcoins, go buy a car on eBay. And all you've done is just transferred it over. It's, you never actually had that money in your hand. You're doing it all virtually. It's amazing to think about. So that's why we're getting into Litecoin or all these different cryptocurrency mining. So back to the topic at hand, ditch Bitcoin. We're going to be talking about altcoins today. And specifically, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the other altcoins, but the one I really wanted to focus on today is Dogecoin. All right. So uh, before we get into how you do all of this, let's talk a little bit about the coins themselves. So there is one called Worldcoin. This is uh, the website for Worldcoin. Very... Uh, interesting looking picture I must say it, it reminds me of something like I'm gonna be donating to some sort of World Wildlife Federation fund or, or feeding the sick children somewhere or something like that so all of these sorts of things uh, on here are pretty hold on one second I gotta oops go offline because people are writing things to me and I can't it's distracting all right so uh, this is Worldcoin and Worldcoin is an option. If you wanted to get into this, I've heard some good things about Worldcoin. People have said that it's supposed to grow pretty strong. It's a good alternative to get into. Um, it's up to you. All of the coins that we're going to be talking about today are basically ultimately going to be turned into Bitcoins at some point anyway. So whatever coin you want to mine, it, it really doesn't matter as long as it's secure. All right. Uh, there's also Peercoin. There's Namecoin. Namecoin is, um, let's see, let's go back to my thing here. Namecoin is, is an interesting one because it uses the uh, SHA-256 that um, Bitcoin uses, which means that you, you can use an ASIC miner for this. Okay? So if you really wanted to, if you had all the equipment and Bitcoin, was the, the, intent, the, uh, the Bitcoin difficulty is so freaking high right now, you could jump into Namecoin and you would still be able to use your same equipment that you have. And uh, it's a nice way to sort of refresh everything. How, how much it's worth, let's go look over here. Um, Namecoin to Bitcoin. It's basically 0 0.007 Namecoin per Bitcoin. So if you had a thousand Namecoins, you would have uh, $7.14 worth, or 7.14 of a Bitcoin. And if you went over to here and you had 7.14, if you can see, this is how I do my comparison. If I had 7.14 name coins, I would have $5,931, which is, is, isn't bad. Oops, I went the other way. Sorry, my bad. 7.14. $5,926, but whatever. Um, so that's uh, a re that's how you exchange, and we'll talk about the exchange in just a little bit. But so that's Namecoin, Worldcoin. Uh, the one we're going to spend a little bit of time with today is Dogecoin, or Dogecoin. And this is I'm I was mining here. I turned it off because it was making my video a little choppy. Um, ba -ba -ba, come on, refresh. Hurry up. 
whatever. It's not working. It's not refreshing. I mined for a few minutes before I started up the video, and I already have nine, nine Doge coins. I mean, literally, it was just a couple minutes. Whereas if I had nine bitcoins, that's a lot of cash, lots of cake. All right. So uh, we talked about the different coins. Now let's get into the actual equipment that you will need to get started doing this. You're interested, you'd like to start mining some of these coins, fair enough. You're gonna need a couple of things before you get started. First off, you're going to need a wallet. Now what's a wallet? What are you talking about, a wallet? Hey, uh, I'm still actually uh, synchronizing with the network, so. But basically you can do two different types of wallet. You can do a wallet on your computer, which is what I'm doing here with the Dogecoin or you can get a wallet online. There are pros and cons to each. Uh, if you wanted to put the wallet on your own computer, it's it's secure, it's on your computer. You could put it on, literally put it on a thumb drive, and then every time uh, you wanted to take it somewhere, you'd literally take it, the thumb drive out and go with you, and you got your, you got your wallet in your hand just like you have a, your regular wallet wallet. So you could do that, or you can do them online. Uh, if it's on your own computer, and your computer catches on fire and burns down, you lose everything. There was a little story of a guy who had 1,100 bitcoins on a hard drive, and he forgot about it because he had been mining them in the beginning when they were worth nothing, really, like half a half of a half of a percent of a cent. I mean, so he had 1,100 of them. He didn't think much about it, and he was built. He built computers, so he had stack. I got a couple of them over here. You get stacks of extra hard drives just laying around. He's like, oh yeah, this one hard drive he had. This is an SSD drive. The one hard drive he had had 1,100 of them on it. He went through his house and he started throwing away all his old equipment and he threw away uh, the hard drive. He lost it. It went into the landfill in his local uh, municipality. Was, he lives in England. Okay. Let's go look and see how much money that fella lost. So he had 1100 He had just shy of $1 million worth of Litecoins. Or, I'm sorry, Bitcoins. And the other day, I think it was that when I, when I read the story, he had well over $1.2 million he just threw into the landfill. <laughs> so having the having your wallet on your own computer is risky in that regard. You, you, your, your stuff could explode. Your house could burn down. You could lose everything, okay? Uh, one thing I do recommend if you want to get... Um, you want to sort of like hedge your bet and you want to have it on your local computer, plus you want to keep a backup... Um, you can go into, I have mine on, uh, on Dropbox. So I've got a backup version of it on Dropbox. So now I've got it online. So if my computers ever die, I can always get to my Dropbox. And I've also got it on my own local computer. And every once in a while I'll back it up and I'll put it on Dropbox. That way I'm hedging my bets. The other thing you could do is you could just go, go to one of these exchanges and just get a coin, get a wallet on the exchange and just send your, your coins to it. Okay. So ultimately, that's what you need to do. You need to somehow get the coin off of your computer and get it onto one of these websites, ultimately, because that's what we're going to be doing. We're talking about exchanges in just a few minutes. Uh, funny thing about the Dogecoin is Doge is, comes from a meme, and we'll talk about that in just a second. But these little cute things are like, wow, please send, much receive, many history, very context. It's, it's very um, I can has cheeseburger sounding in its names and stuff. All right, so yeah, Corkless Prime says he's kicking himself right now. Yeah, matter of fact, he went to that um, he went to that landfill and he just tore the thing apart trying to find it. He, and the people in the at the landfill actually helped him dig and try to find more. And it might even been a bigger number. I could have sworn it was even higher than a million. I thought it was something like two or three million, maybe even higher. So I could be wrong with my numbers, but basically it was a hell of a lot of money to lose just by losing a hard drive. So that's why you kind of want to have a backup plan, and that's why I'm using my. Uh, using the, the local one and I'm also uploading it to um, to uh, Dropbox as a backup. Okay, so now um, you need to get a wallet. So that's how that's what a wallet is. It's a, it's a virtual place where you can put your coins, whether it's online, offline, whatever. You need to have some place to put the coins after you mine them. Um, then what you need to do is you have to figure out what do you want to do as far as mining. There's two different ways you can mine. You can mine either by yourself, which you just turn on your computer, start the miner up. Um, I'm not going to cover that today, but you can do that. And you can mine your own stuff and and mine your coins locally by yourself. It might take you a few weeks to find a coin, but you can do it and you own the entire coin. 
and it's yours. You've got it all by yourself. You didn't involve anybody else. Or you can go to a pool, and a pool is what I recommend, mainly because it's easier to set up. There's uh, you, you are paying out a little bit, but it's easier to set up, it's easier to use, and ultimately it really doesn't matter. I'm giving this pool right here 1.5% of all of the coins I get are going into this pool. Who cares? You know, I mean, that's a tiny percentage. There's some pools that are actually free. I like the nut to pool one. It seems to connect all the time for me. I've used other pools where my, my miner just sits there for hours and doesn't connect at all, and I'm like, crap. And it's not me. It's actually the, it's actually the, the, the pool itself. So pools are where you can work with other people to find coins. And the, because you're all working together, the more work you do on that pool, the more of a coin you're going to get. And as you see, I turned my miner off because, remember, I was having a little bit of a problem. But say I'm mining around 900 or say 800,000 hashes per second, uh, I'll probably get maybe 0 0.05 of a share. So I'm getting half half of a percent of a share every time the, the round goes around. This is the round. Every time the round goes around, we find a coin, I get a portion of it because I helped this much to get that part of that coin. It's very easy to understand once you get into it. Basically, you're all working together, and you kind of crank through it, and once you've done all your little work, you get a uh, you get parts of the coin. So basically, I've already earned nine coins. I was running only about 20 minutes before I started the show. <coughs> Excuse me. So anyway, um, that is how you get coins with this. Okay, mining together, which is called a pool. There are lots of them out there. All you gotta do is look for one, find one that appeals to you. They almost all use the same dashboard software. It's really funny. Every site you go to, all that's different is really up at the top their logo and maybe some other things up here, but it's all the same exact software. They all use this dashboard, which is whatever. I guess I could probably start my own pool if I wanted. Uh, Nuno2099 says, can you make real money with this? Uh, maybe use to buy stuff online like Star Citizen packages. Yes, you can. Now, Star Citizen, or, uh, Robert Space Industries is not accepting Bitcoin or Litecoin right now for money, but uh, we talked. We're going to talk about exchanges right now, actually. So it's a it's a good segue. Um, once you've mined all of your coins, you can do a couple of things with it. You can you can convert them into bitcoins, or you can cash them out into money. If you really want to stay with the whole pure, pure altruistic version, not altruistic, but you're the purest version of a Bitcoin you, or, or of this cryptocurrency, you never want to turn it into fiat. You never want to turn it back into real money, okay? Because it's basically, that's the whole point of you getting it, is you're trying to stay away from that kind of money. But if you really wanted to, you wanted to buy a new house, uh, you can, you can convert it in. And that's what we're going to talk about is in, in the exchanges. The two exchanges I recommend are BTCE. Uh, they're, uh, I think, a Ukraine-based place. Let me log in here so you can see some of this stuff. And um, Cripsy. BTCE is really well recognized as a good, safe place to use. All of these are a little bit fishy. You kind of got to be wary of which ones you get into. But it's safe enough, okay? If you get in and get out quickly, you get your money, who cares? reason I like BTCE is it, it, you can exchange it for US dollars and if you have over $500 that you're changing it you can send it to PayPal directly so if you've made a thousand dollars you send that thousand dollars to your PayPal account no other of the other currency places do that so I kinda like them for that they also if you have less than $500 and you want to get out you can uh, but they use these really weird uh, Ukrainian money exchange places that really make me nervous you know they're like Billy Bob uh, Moskowitz's uh, exchange money exchange. Yeah, you can use that. I'm really nervous about using that kind of stuff. So if you're ready, to, if you're ready to take the money out, this is how you do it. You know, the BTC exchange. And there's also and then Cripsy. The reason I recommend Cripsy is basically all crypto coins that are in existence right now are on Cripsy. So if you want to actively have an exchange that you can change anything into anything, Cripsy is your place. But basically, you can change. From the main two things you can exchange into are Litecoin and Bitcoin. So if you notice, a lot of these are like 42 into Bitcoin, um, BET into Bitcoin, that's Betacoin, uh, CNC into Bitcoin. Now this one is Colossus into Litecoin, Litecoin, Bitcoin. Okay, so the one we we're talking, we're going to talk a little bit about today once we get going here is the Dogecoin, and Doge is here, and Doge into Bitcoin is basically. 
point zero 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 two Dogecoin per I mean, or Litecoin per Dogecoin. It's gonna take a while to change them, okay? But let's go. Let's just go look at that real quick. Say I have been mining Dogecoins all night, and now I have five hundred Dogecoins. Okay, that is worth. 0 0.001 of a Bitcoin. Now going over to the this exchange to see how much that's worth in real money. If we say we have 0 0.001, oops, that's worth 83 cents. Uh, nobody's going to get massively rich doing this. Okay, not yet. Um, but it is a way to make money. If you have your computer running all night long and you're running your coin, you're, you're mining, then you already have a chance to make your money. It's not like you're you're using a little bit of electricity, but it's not you're not using nearly that much electricity to get these coins. All right. <clears throat> Let me read some of the chat here real quick. Um, it's a volatile currency, but people have made real money, millions of bitcoins, millions off of bitcoin. Yeah, uh, I use money that doesn't exist to buy ships that don't exist in a game that does not exist yet. Very meta, absolutely, Trinday. Corkless Prime says, example, the Silk Road seizure of Bitcoins was estimated worth $28 million. Mm -hmm. What vault do I use? Doge Vault or Doge API? I'm using the um, the Dogecoin wallet for my for my thing. Uh, if you go to, um, where is it? Uh, nope, we'll go to Dogecoin. Okay, All you, to get this wallet... I should have mentioned this earlier. All you need is go to this Dogecoin site and you can download it right here. You just download it, it's an executable. It's pretty safe, don't, don't panic. Um, and then you uh, op you run it and then this, you get this, this thing here. Okay. So I haven't actually transferred any coins to it yet because I, I just started this morning with the Dogecoin. All right, so this is how you get your money out is either using one of these exchanges or both of these exchanges. Every time you transfer money or coins to one of these exchanges, they take a cut. See, this they take 0.30% of a fee. All right, so you have to be comfortable with that. So you can't do this all day long and not lose money. I mean, if you, it, what I'm saying is you can't like sit there and like sell one, buy two, sell three, buy four, whatever, or, or the other way around, sell four, buy one. If you do all that kind of back and forth kind of day trading stuff, you're going to be, they take a cut every time either way, which can be done if you're into the day trading thing, go for it. You know, I'm, I'm not a day trader by all, any means. I, I'm not really good with the markets. Uh, I'm basically just cranking through these coins so I have a nice stockpile that I can sell later on. All right. Oh, one of the other cool things I like about Cripsy here is once you've clicked on a coin that you're interested in, it puts it at the top of the list and it just kind of always updates what those coins were. Like I clicked on 42 and I clicked on Litecoin and now I clicked on Doge and it's just updating it all the time. I think that's really slick as far as uh, if you're watching these kind of things. All right, so you're running it, but it says out of sync. Yes. So we'll go back a little bit real quick. The, the wallets have to be synced up. Um, Every time you transfer a coin from either your computer or from one site to another, it has to be verified by, I think, six or eight people. Six, eight people have to run their miners, and their miners have to verify it. Now, when that happens, they get a piece of that coin. So don't panic. You're not losing much. Um, but because they ran it, they verified it, they get paid. And that's how you get paid, too. When you're running your miner, you're actually verifying other people's transactions. So that's how it keeps it sort of secure. No, Not one person can verify that somebody else transferred money because then that would break the system right so everybody that is doing the mining is actually verifying other people's transactions too at the same time they're looking for the coins so all that together basically makes it a very very secure system all right so now we've talked about where to get the where to get your uh, wallet okay we've talked about um, where to, to mine from whether you want to mine on a pool or if you want to mine solo I'm not gonna go in the solo thing today now we also talked about where to exchange your coins. Um, as far as the pools go, make sure whatever pool, I do wanna go back about that, I just thought about this. You want to sign up for one of these sites and then they always have a getting started section. So you click on getting started and it walks you through how, sorry, this, this place is a little slow today. Um, you, might, you click on getting started, it'll tell you how to set it up. All right? 
follow their instructions. They have uh, chat rooms you can go into, or there's an IRC chat you can go talk to people. Do that. We'll talk a little bit about the uh, the whole thing with me in just a bit. Okay, so what am I using now? How do I actually start mining Geek Domo? I, I've done all that. Okay, I, I I dig what you're talking about. I know I can get a pool. I know I can get a wallet. Um, I know about the different types of places to go to change it. Now what do I do? How do I actually start mining? You've, you've talked around the subject long enough now. Let's get into it. All right, you're going to need a program called CG Miner. Okay? In the past, you know, the, the previous video I made, I talked all about... Oops. Sorry about that. In the previous video I made, I talked all about... Um, wait, hold on. I talked all about using a program called GUI Miner. Okay? Please, for the love of baby Jesus, don't use that program. It's bad. Okay? It doesn't work right. <laughs> it worked okay for me, but in the month and a half since I made that video, I can't tell you, I, I, I can't tell you the number of people writing me every single day asking me for tech support for GUI Miner. I didn't write the program. All right? I have no idea how to fix it if it's not working on your computer. I installed it. It ran beautifully. I put it on another friend's computer. I installed it. It ran beautifully. I assumed it was probably easy to install and use. I was completely wrong. There are, I'm getting 20 to 50 emails a week asking me for tech support for that program that I didn't write and I have nothing to do with. I didn't, I have, I don't know the author. I don't know. So for God's sake, stop using GUI Miner. The what you want to use is CG Miner, okay? Download CG Miner. You want at least version 3.7, okay? Don't get too incredibly high with the number. Now I'm showing you this. This is where I got it from. I would recommend somewhere between, like, okay, say 3.5 and 3.7. Don't go any higher than 3.7. It doesn't work right for script mining, which is what we're going to be doing with the with the Doge the Dogecoin. Okay, going higher than 3.7, it's probably not going to work. If you're Bitcoin mining, then yeah, you can go 3.8, 3.9 because that's what it was set up for originally. But for script mining, you want to use one of these these smaller ones. Okay. All right. So this is where you get it. I will have the link to this this uh, link in the description. Please follow the instructions that are in uh, the setup, the README file, and everything. I will also give you a copy. I'll put in the description what my uh, what mine looks like. Each person is going to be completely different. Okay, this is my batch file that I wrote for Litecoin mining, or actually for any any script mining. This is all script. Okay. If you're new to this, you're going to be like, what the hell is all of this? I did make a video. It's video number three, which talks exactly about how to set this up. All right? Because I because I can't tell exactly what you've got in your computer, I can't give you tips and everything how to use this. It's beyond the scope of what I'm able to do. So if you are setting it up, what I recommend is, because this says Litecoin mining, and we're, we're not talking about Litecoin mining today, but effectively, if you're script mining, it's all going to be the same. Because as long as you're doing S script mining, script mining, then this is all the same stuff. Okay? What this site does is, once you're setting up your, your script, or once you're setting up your batch file, if you notice, here's the name of the executable. I'm telling you that I'm using script. This is my login and password, and I don't care I'm showing you that because if you want to use my login and password to mine, go for it. Uh, and then this is the URL for the site. This is the port number at the end. This is the intensity. We'll talk a bit about that in a second. Lookup gap, thread concurrency, all of these sort of things at the end, don't worry about. Why? Because it doesn't really matter if you're just starting out. Where I got that information was off of this chart. 
I don't know how many times I have to explain this to everybody, and I'm not mad. I'm just explaining this because I'm the, the number of people that are asking me for help on a day-to-day -day basis is beyond, is beyond comprehension. I just it's blowing my mind. And I did offer to help when I thought that there was going to be like three people that were going to view that video, but after 50,000 people have viewed it, my brain is going to explode. Um, and where I get this information is here. If you have an R290 and you're running this particular model, this is what you put in there on your batch file. Okay, I am not some kind of magic scientist. I can't tell everybody every single thing about every computer, every pot. This is impossible for me to have all this stuff in my head. And when you ask me, please, Geek Domo, tell me what I'm supposed to put in the config, all I'm going to do is come to this website and look and go, oh, you need this one, and send it back to you. So if I'm telling you right now, this is where you're going to come. From now on, anybody ask me for any help, I'm going to give them this URL and just say, come here and figure it out yourself. <laughs> because while I want to help you, I just can't. There's just too much. And another thing before we get off of me off this soapbox here. If you have a processor, a CPU that has an onboard video card inside the CPU, which is a i5, i7, uh, the AMD APUs, they are not GPUs that are discrete. They are not discrete. Discrete means it's a card. This is a discrete GPU. This happens to be a 6950 from AMD. Okay? This is a discrete GPU. If you do not have one of those, you cannot mine. I am getting so many people, this, this is the problem, it's just the people asking me, what should I put in my CG miner? What should I do with this? And, and how come my computer's not hashing? I've got an i3 and uh, no GPU. I don't know what a GPU is. If you can't be bothered to know what a GPU is, then please don't write me. Okay. I'm done with that. I'm not yelling at you people. I'm just, my brain's going to explode. It's, it's too much on a day-to-day -day basis to open up my email and I'm get flooded with all these people asking me all this stuff. And I've been pretty clear in my tutorials how to do all this. And I guess people are just watching the first two minutes and going, I need help, and then writing me. Okay. We'll get into that in a minute. Actually, I actually have a whole section I want to talk about where to get help when Geek Domo won't write to back to you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes, thank you, Malefic. Malefic says, it seems pretty simple, man. This is my first time seeing any videos on the subject. I think I figured it out. Exactly. But there are people that are just completely 100% computer literate who have a hard time moving the mouse around. And they're, they're writing me and asking me to do stuff for them. And my, I just can't keep doing it, man. I just really can't. I'm fried. Hey, Trinane says, you hate us. I don't hate you. I will give you a big hug, I promise. Okay. Back to the subject as hand. What to do is write more. I don't write. That's why I make these videos, because I just don't write. Okay, uh, back to what we were talking about. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. So, the software you need to get is CG Miner. It's right here. It's free on this website. Once you have CG Miner installed, it doesn't really install, actually. You just download the folder and open it. <laughs> but once you've uh, in opened the f file, <laughs> Sergeant Stacker says, why won't my scientific calculator hash please help? I can't get my freaking analog watch to hash, man. So once you get that downloaded and you set it up, uh, then you set up your uh, batch file, which I'm talking about, and you should technically be able to hash. I'm not going to do it again because I found out before that if I start my miner up while I'm streaming, it crashes XSplit and i got to restart my whole computer. So, uh, so yeah. All right. Back to the subject at hand. Next thing we want to talk about is hardware. So we got the software. Let's talk a little bit about the hardware. The software you can get for free, but the hardware you might have to buy. <clears throat> there are two main video card manufacturers. One is NVIDIA. The other one is AMD. And this is, like I said before, AMD. There is a type of software out there called a CUDA miner. If you're not familiar with AMD, uh, does not have CUDA cores but NVIDIA does. Um, the old 6950 here, if we go to our chart, and we go down to our chart, and we look at the 6950, a 6950 set up right correctly does around 500 to 600 
thousand hashes per second. Okay, if we go look at the latest and greatest GTX card, hashing away like a madman will get around two hundred thousand hashes per second. Well, even when let's let's just let's look at the Titan. Titan does three hundred sixty-six. This card is three years old. The Titan and cost I can get one on eBay for fifty bucks or a hundred bucks. Uh, and this one costs a thousand dollars and it does half what this card can do. Why is that Geek Domo? Explain this to me. Uh, there are two different main processors that are built into each one of these companies' cards. Like I was saying before, Nvidia uses CUDA as its uh, thing, and AMD uses a completely different system. And so AMD is the preferred mining card out there. And the best mining card that you can currently get is still the 7950 which I'm, I've gotten here and I'm not going to take out to show you because I'd blow up my computer pulling it out right now. Uh, it's a 7950. Yes, there are the 280s and 290s. I have a 290 in here also. Okay, But the best bang for the buck, and I'll show you why. A 7950 uses 206, um, 240 to 260 watts of power. Does 700,000 hashes per second. Now let's go down this chart here. I'm glad I'm showing you this chart because this is a really good example of what I'm talking about with people. Let's look at the 290X. Okay. Does between 730 and 885. I have a 290, so I'm I'm actually pushing around 800. So if you notice, some of the 290Xs are lower than the the 290s, um, but whatever. Uh, the 290X or the 290, basically 800 and pushing out 300 to 400 watts. So 250 watts or 240 watts versus 400 watts. That's why the, two, the 7950 is still the preferred bang for the buck. You're getting a little slower, but you're using less wattage, which means you're using less power, meaning using your, your electric bill isn't going to go up as much. So that's why the 7950 is the preferred card. They are incredibly hard to find. Uh, eBay is now starting to loosen up a little bit trying to find them. Uh, but last time I looked, let's look for a 7950. It's still $359, $306. I only paid, by the way, I only paid uh, $125 for mine, or $150 for mine. But because of miners, this is why these prices are out of their freaking mind. $399. Okay? Now let's go look at the price of a brand new 290. Not a 290X, just a 290. An AMD 290 is $500. Okay? While that's more expensive, yes, this card is only $100 less <laughs> and is and outperforms that card, but these prices are gouging people. This is not a $400 card. Any stretch of the term the meaning. It's because they're nearly impossible to find now. Okay? Once again, you're trying to get into this and you don't know what card to buy. Look for what you can afford, of course, and look at this damn table. I can't advise you exactly every single card to buy. I got people writing me saying, I got a 4350. How many hashes is it going to do? It's going to do 10,000 hashes per second, man. You, you're better off running it on your wristwatch. Okay? Don't tell me you got five of these because you found them really cheap. It's five of those still isn't anywhere close <laughs> to even a single 7950 or something. If you want to invest money in this system and get this thing to work, you have to do that. If you don't and you're trying to do it with what you got, then that's what you're going to get. Okay, if you have only a certain type of video card, like you've got an old GTX 275, you're looking at 90,000 hashes per second compared to 800,000 hashes per second for a newer card. If you're okay with that, then that's fine. But that's what you're going to get. All right? So, you're looking for cards, what you can, you want to look in this chart, find what you can afford and look for that card and see which ones are the best prices. Stay away from eBay if you can, unless you can find one that's buy it now and the guy just put it up 10 seconds ago and he put it up accidentally for 100 bucks. Grab it. If not, go to uh, you want to try to stay with more of the mainline companies like Newegg. 
but you're probably not going to find any there. So, because everyone's buying them up at, for two hundred dollars, which is what they're worth, and selling them on eBay for four hundred. It's a great, uh, it's a great way to gouge people. And, and yeah, yeah. Look at it, seventy nine fifty, four hundred and twenty nine dollars for a two or three year old card. It's ridiculous. It's just, it's insane. But it's us. It's our fault. The miners are doing this. Okay, so we've talked about uh, the different types of cards. Skip using NVIDIA if you can. If you have a NVIDIA card and it works, like Trendane, and it's good for doing your video games and stuff, and you just want to mine on the side, by all means, go for it, okay? If you don't, and you're looking to get in, and you have an AMD card, then you're going to start mining like crazy right off the bat. Uh, Warwolf asks, just to put in perspective, for me, how many thousands of hashes would it take to generate ten dollars? A lots of thousands of hashes. Um, we'll go here. Let's pretend. Right now, if you have, uh, if you're getting around five million hashes per second, which is about seven or eight, uh, se uh, two nineties, you're probably going to make a coin a day. So let's go here and we'll look at our um, Litecoin to US dollar. We're just using Litecoin because whatever. So say you get one Litecoin a day, and so in 30 days, you've made $716. If you if you have the ability to do that now, to buy eight, um, eight 7950s, you're looking at quite an investment. Let's see. If you're buying it from here, of course. Let's just for instead of spend 429, let's buy the brand new 290s, um, and so. If the 290 is uh, $500 times 8, it's $4,000, okay? Plus all the other equipment you need to buy. So you're probably looking at maybe maybe six, seven thousand. dollars say, say you're in it for six grand, and you can make $700 a month. Uh, oops. Oh, jeez. Anyway, it's <laughs> it'll take you about four or five months to pay it off. After that, you're making nothing but profit. Okay. Hey, Malik of Gaming. So I hope that helps you out there, Warwolf. All right. <clears throat> Back to what we were talking about. So we talked. To, oops, sorry, we talked about the uh, the different types of hardware you're going to need. And so there we are. That's what you're looking at. If you wanted to buy the, the best of the best, this is what you want to get. You don't want to get this one. You want to get a 290. And why you want the 290 series uh, is because... Oops. I want the 290, not the 90. Um, is because this one has mantle. If you're into video games at all, uh, this is the, the you're going to want to keep these anyway because they're really awesome. So if you're going to be getting in, if you're a gamer, um, yeah. All right. So there we go. We got the cards. We got the mine, miner, the software. Um, we got the wallet. We got your. We got the where you're going to mine it at and where we're going to sell the coins. Now let's talk a little bit about mm, about eleven months at seven hundred dollars a month to pay for six dollars. Like, okay, thanks, Warwolf. I'm really bad at doing the math on the fly like that. And I, I got I erased my stuff. So Trinity says, yeah, I'd just be mining on the side like while I'm sleeping or something. Yeah, exactly. You run this at night when you're sleeping, and then you can make you can make a few bucks. Um, right now, currently, I have uh, 15 Litecoins. So, uh, and I stopped mining Litecoins. I've switched up to a different one, but I've got 358 bucks. Basically, I paid for the one card that I bought. Knox is mining right now. Oh, great. Great. Okay. So, um, back to what we're talking about. So let's talk a little bit about the future of mining and why am I talking about the future well just like when Bitcoin first came out um, when Bitcoin first came out you mined with your CPU then you went to GPU then they went to ASIC uh, one of the other emails that I'm getting constantly is hey geek domo what do you think about this latest ASIC miner for Litecoin and I say how often would you like to be scammed okay because here's what happens: people go, people go out to uh, to. Let's go to Amazon real quick. I'm taking you around because I want to show you kind of what to watch out for. Okay. They see that the the card here on 
on Newegg is is five hundred and nineteen dollars. And me talking, I said it gets around eight hundred thousand hashes per second. Thousand hashes per second. Eight hundred thousand hashes per second. I'm I'm reiterating that because I want you to keep in your mind. I said eight hundred thousand hashes per second. And they come on here and they see. Look at this. One of these little thirty-five dollar things does three hundred and thirty million hashes per second and it's $35 geek domo I can plug that in my USB port and I bought it for $35 compared to the thing that you're talking about which cost $519 geek domo so obviously this is a better deal right now you can not mine script files or script coins which is Litecoin, Dogecoin, Worldcoin, okay, with an ASIC miner. You cannot mine with an ASIC miner. It's basically like saying I have I have a, I, I do own a 1990 Ford Mustang GT convertible. Actually it's an LX 7 up Mustang. Basically, 7-Up made all these Mustangs, and nobody uh, they, didn't, they didn't give them away like they were supposed to at the basketball game, so they had all these left over, and Ford sold them. Uh, it's fully leather. All the, it's, it's basically a GT with an LX body, which means super light, and it looks like it's like a sleeper car. It's got a white top, green body. It's like me saying, I have that car, and I go and take a bunch of diesel fuel, dump it in the tank, and expect it to drive. You cannot take diesel... Dump it in a gas engine and expect it to run. You cannot take script, run it through an ASIC and expect it to run. It will not hash. Okay? I'm sorry I'm like so strong about this, but this is after a month and a half of people writing me daily asking me how, how they can mine with this ASIC. And and why I don't care that I, I, I quickly write back, oh, you can't do that. Okay? And I just I tell them. It's not that that's the part that's bothering me. All right? It's not that. It's this. It's this shit. All of these companies are trying to get on the Litecoin train right now, okay? Because they saw what happened with Bitcoin. If they can get in there first, then they're going to do that. And they're going to be able to sell this stuff. Most of these, most of them are selling you a bill of goods. Meaning, if you don't know what that term means, it means they're selling you crap. They're selling you a dream. A lot of them want 50 or higher percent down to get one of these things that does not exist yet. Now, they will come out with them. I'm not saying they're not going to. But if you want to be an early adopter, expect that you're going to get screwed over. Okay? Expect you're just going to get your money stolen from you. I don't know how to be more blunt than that. Because basically, at least five other companies have said they're going to come up with Litecoin ASIC miners and have taken money and just disappeared poof into the, the mist with millions of dollars in people's investments when the thing comes out and people are buying it and they're coming up with reviews saying that this thing works and it's working great buy one then by all means I'm not telling you never to buy an ASIC miner for Litecoin or any of the other script coins stop talking to me about these silly things when they don't exist yet. When they actually exist and you can hold one in your hand and you can say, look, Geek Domo, I just mined 5 million hashes per second with this thing. Then do it. Okay? I'm all for it. I'm not saying that'll never happen. Right now, it is not there. They don't have any. Okay. So, that's what I'm talking about the future of mining. Right now, it's GPU. It will move into ASIC at some point down the road, but not today. All right. Boy, I feel like I'm yelling a lot today. I didn't really mean to. Uh, it's just, I keep getting, the, when you get the same questions over and over again, <laughs> I just, I like, oh. okay. So, I'm hoping that people that are watching this are, are, are getting the point when I keep, I'm, I'm beating these things up is because a lot of these things, let's go watch this video. No, I can't, because I, that's, I can't put somebody else's video on my, on my channel. But basically, this might be a real thing. Alpha technology might, but all of them are taking pre-orders. And look at this. They want 30% deposit. Okay, so they, this thing is going to cost $9,000. So $9,000 times 
They want $2,700 of your money before you see anything. If you're willing to dump $2,700 out the window and hope that it's going to come true, go for it. If not, and you're more cautious, buy a freaking GPU and stop asking questions about the ASIC miners. They're, they're coming, but not right away. And it's going to be years before they're freaking USB size that uh, that you can buy for 30 bucks. And even if you can buy these one for 30 bucks, to, to mine right now, you need like 100 of these damn things. So you're still looking at 350 bucks or $3,500. Okay, enough of that crap. Let's get on. <laughs> yeah, calculator, Jesus. I'm really bad. <laughs> uh, the guys in the chat are going, preach it. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, back to the ta back to what we were talking about. So now we've talked about the GUI miner, and we've talked about CG miner. Uh, we've talked about problems with things that are coming up in the future. ASIC miners. Okay. Last little thing I really wanted to talk about today was what to do when you're stuck. What to do when you're stuck is not right geek domo. What to do? What I'm going to do is tell you to watch my other videos because I cover all this stuff in great detail. All right. What to do when you're stuck is there's a couple of websites you can go to out there that are really full of pros. We mine LTC. Okay. This is a Litecoin mining pool that I belong to for a long time, and they're very friendly. You come in here to the user chat, and you're not a complete dick. You can come in here and say, hey, everybody, I'm having an issue. Okay? Or you can type in exclamation point guide. And it comes up with the guide. And it this is Rain. Now, Rain is the guy I used to recommend people going over there to talk to. Because Rain used to be there, and he would help you out. He would literally go, hey, okay, yeah, why don't you try this in your CG miner? That'll fix it. And sure enough, it did. But this freaking guy has probably got hammered. Because when I first started going here, there was maybe 10 people in this chat. Look at all the people in this chat right now. Okay? So this is where you come through, and he will walk you through getting started, how to get it going. If you followed every single thing that he has talked about in here, and you still are having problems, you come to the chat, and you say, hey, guys, I followed this. Okay? I followed Rain's guide, and I still can't get it to work. There's usually enough people in here that somebody be like, oh, why don't you try this? And it might be helpful. You'll get quicker answers by writing to the guys on this website than you will by writing to me. Mainly because I have another job. I got a lot of work I do. And I also do my streaming and stuff like that. So come there, ask them for help. They should be able to help you. If that still doesn't good enough for you, there are several sites out there that you can get help. Forums. You want to look for forums. So look for Dogecoin Forum. This is the official forum of the Dogecoin. And it's uh, not opening. There it goes. So come in here and talk to people. The best way you're going to learn how to do this stuff is learning it for yourself. Okay, I don't mean to be rude about it, but that's how I did it. And while I'd like to help everybody, I really can't. So if you can find some places like this where you can come talk to people, come talk, look at the Rain's uh, Litecoin Mining Guide. I'll put this uh, this link in the description on YouTube so you'll be able to find that. Um, get some help with like this, okay? It's really not as difficult as it sounds, and once you've got your stuff all set up, it'll fly. It'll just purr right along and you'll be cranking out the coins. All right, what? Oh, okay, let's see what else. Uh... <laughs> hey, everyone, I'm having an issue. My 3DFX Voodoo 3 isn't supported. <laughs> yeah, your Canopus 3DFX is just not working. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. You're probably not going to be able to hash too, uh, too much with that. Okay, so let's talk about one last thing I want to talk about. So we talked about all this other stuff. What What is Doge? The hell is Doge? Because uh, some of you might be going, wait, wait a second, it's a meme. Okay, and Doge is a meme. Uh, and so what happened was, is the guy who invented the Doge coin basically decided that this meme was funny enough to make a coin. It was sort of a joke. It really did start out as sort of like half-assed joke. And since then, it has turned into a real coin, and it is growing like crazy. 
it's expanding so fast that people are starting to freak out that Dogecoin is growing this quick. I mean, it went up really quick. <laughs> the funniest thing was it went up like crazy on Monday. Why did it go up quite crazy on Monday? Because the Jamaican bobsled team put down that they would accept Dogecoin as donations. As funny as that sounds, it's absolutely true. And so Dogecoin just went pew through the roof. Okay? <laughs> the Jamaican bobsled team. The like the joke of the Olympics every year. I mean, I saw Cool Runnings. It was a good movie. But <laughs> it's just so awesome that something as ridiculous as the Jamaican bobsled team going to a and using a coin that sort of was a joke coin. It just blows my mind how ridiculous all of this is. So anyway. So Doge, uh, the Doge thing comes from this. It, it, this website here, uh, Know Your Memes, is a great place that if you're trying to figure out what the hell, is, why is everyone so excited about this meme? Um, this is where you can find it. You can find all the stuff about it. So basically, uh, it was in October 2010 that um, it really kind of took off. And this was the, the original photographer's pictures. And that little dog, that little picture right there, is the Doge dog. And basically, it's like an eternal monologue that's going on with the dog. Basically saying things like, um, uh, much happy. Uh, you know, it's kind of like, oh, we'll go down to the bottom here because I have some examples. Um, give attention, much birth, such afraid, time travel phase, return to mean meme. <laughs> So it's, it's basically like this silly thing, okay? Uh, but the Dogecoin, let's talk about this. On December 6th, Bitcoin 4 member Dogecoin introduced an alternate cryptocurrency based on the meme of a satire of a Bitcoin boom thread titled Dogecoin, very currency, many coin, wow. Released, similar to Bitcoin and its derivatives, Dogecoin can be mined in exchange for goods and services among participants, though its programming level out at a higher threshold of 100 billion coins and prevent any use of special Bitcoin mining equipment like ASICs. They actually are trying to prevent ASIC. That was the other thing I wanted to bring up during the ASIC thing I kind of forgot. Go step back a little bit to my ASIC rant. Um, they, the people designed these things to prevent ASICs from mining. Why? Because ASICs kill the normal, what the thing was designed to do. It was designed to be mined on a CPU. Then it went to GPU. GPU is about as far as people want these things to go. They don't want ASICs. They don't want you mining with this specialized equipment. You're supposed to be mining this stuff with your own home computer. And when it becomes a specialized equipment, then it loses all of its sort of power because it's like, oh my god, now big corporations like uh, AT&T can buy thousands of ASIC miners and then crush everybody else. So that's why they're trying to keep it that way. And and, and you see Dogecoin actually is trying to prevent ASICs too. Uh, in comparison, Bitcoin will cap out at 21 million coins and Litecoin will support up to 84 million coins in circulation. So it's a little bit bigger than Litecoin as far as the number of coins that are going to come out. But they are capped and all of these are capped. All right. Uh, following the launch of the official website, a slew of social media channels, referential pages soon emerged for Dogecoin, including a Twitter account and a Facebook page, racking up more than 100,000 uh, Okay. Uh, throughout the first week of December, Dogecoin was highly uh, highlighted by a number of tech news sites and blogs, providing further boost to the value of the satirical currency. See, it started out as a satire. By December 14th, an encyclopedic article describing the concept of Dogecoin had been submitted by Wikipedia and... Okay. At its peak, the estimated value of Dogecoin skyrocketed to as high as $400 per coin. I read that right, okay? $400 per coin. It has since dropped. Okay, don't don't panic. It's no longer that. Uh, but the value is going back up. And currently, as of December 15th, it's worth about 0. .0002 US dollars. It's going to be a while before it's worth a lot of money but it, as long as the interest keeps going up on it then yeah on the day of christmas several members of the dogecoin forum began reporting their funds are being transferred to an unknown identity so on christmas day it was hacked um so it's uh blah, 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 resulting in a loss of up to twelve thousand worth of cryptocurrency in addition the doge wallet administrators announced they immediately began reimbursing okay so basically doge wallet got hacked and uh, the community actually turned around and, and kind of supported each other to keep it going. So it is a real coin. Uh, I recommend that if you guys are just starting to getting out, Doge is a good one. And why do you want to get into one of the newer coins? What does all this have to do with everything? So we'll, we'll kind of wrap up with this. If Whatever coin you get into, it doesn't matter. Because ultimately you're going to do two things with it. I talked about this earlier. You're going to either turn it into a Bitcoin or you're going to turn it into real money like a US dollar or a Euro 
or rubles, whatever it is you're trying to turn the money into, okay? As long as you could exchange that coin for something else which will turn into Bitcoin or US dollars or your fiat money, then that's all that matters. It doesn't matter what coin you mine. You can mine world coin, pure coin, whatever it is, doesn't matter, as long as it can be transferred into something else. And so ultimately that's the whole point. So a site like Cripsy can help you turn basically all these weird, random, freaking coins. There's so many different coins out there. Uh, and all of them are just sort of more strange and bizarre than the, the previous one. Um, let's see, we'll go down. These are all the different coins. Okay, look at them all. These are all the different coins. As long as you can trade any of these coins into Bitcoin or real currency, then you're, you're good. All right. <laughs> all right. Uh, I'll help with that. RIP John Candy. Yes. Uh, Genius PR, when you think about it, exactly. It's 0 0.002 now. Yeah, it's going up. So, Dogecoin is definitely something I recommend you guys getting into. Check it out. If you have any questions about anything I talked about today, and it's not what I ranted about, you can ask me a question, okay? You can send it to geek at geekdomo.com. If I don't write back, it's not that I'm trying to be an asshole. It just means that I'm busy, and maybe I just can't spend the time to answer your question. Generally, I write back to everybody, but if I haven't, it's just I'm, I'm getting swamped. I really am. But I hope this video is a little bit helpful to you if you're started getting, sort of getting started. It should be at least enough of a tutorial to kind of get your feet wet. If you're looking for more specifics, if you want to find out about uh, more details, I have other videos. There's going to be, I'll put the links above me here. Um, you'll be able to go to my other videos. Specifically, video number three is all about how to set up the CG Miner. All right? So if you're wanting to get into this this and you're not and trying to figure out about CG Miner I didn't cover it that much in this video about how to set it up because I have a whole video about how to set it up if you're trying to figure out basically how to get into Litecoin mining you can watch my first part if you want to build a massive crazy rig you can watch part four okay oh so Knox has 12,300 uh, 12, doji coins <laughs> what is this Oh yes, that's what I wrote in my email from Warwolf. All right, so let's look. Let's just do a real quick uh, thing here. We'll go here. Uh, but, but, but where to go? Oh, Cripsy, we're already on Cripsy. Let's go to uh, Dogecoin. So, our friend here, Mr. Knox, is a is a proponent of the Dogecoin. Come on, open up. Sorry, this is really slow. All these uh, sites are being really slow lately, especially like the Dogecoin pool. I can't even get it to, to go. Okay, so I'll go down here. Oops, went right past it. Dogecoin to Bitcoin. Okay, and now he has 12,300, which is worth about point 027 of a Bitcoin. So let's go over here and we'll see 0 0.027. $22 and 40 cents is what he's got so far. It's not exciting by any means, but if you're just gonna be mining anyway, um, what does it matter? Right? And what if those coins what if those coins went up? And what if they started being worth more? What if they started being worth 0.5 of a Bitcoin? If it was worth, if he had 12,300, and, and, and that doesn't seem too out of reason to get, just in the five minutes or 10 minutes I did before the show, I have nine already. Um, so he's, he gets, he has, uh, they're worth 0.5 of a Bitcoin, which is roughly what Litecoin's starting to get up to. Let's look and see how much he has right now if it, if it goes along this route. Okay, this is just for fun. Of course, this isn't real. Um, but he has 613. He would have $508,000. That's not bad. Can't guarantee that's going to happen, folks. But if you hang on to these things long enough, it might, which is really cool. All right. So, uh, hello, Astro Tempers. 
Dear Domo, how many hashes a second will my IFS, IFS, IFCS and my freelancer get? That's a good question. I'm thinking in the future, you'll probably be able to hash with your wish watch. So we'll see. All right, everybody. Uh, like I said, hopefully this was helpful to you. Check out my other videos. They have a lot more specific information about how to set things up. This was more as a refresh and a re-tutorial about all this stuff. Um, and so hopefully we were helpful. I was helpful for you today. And uh, if you have any questions at all, please write to me. I'm just, some of them I won't be able to answer. <laughs> all right, so that's about it for today. Thanks, everybody, for coming along. Uh, back to my normal gaming videos starting soon. So until next time, this is Geek Domo saying see ya.